Today we're going to be looking at factorizing. Now factorizing is just the reverse of multiplying out. So you've done a lot of multiplying out, right? Using the distributive law, multiply 5x times 2x plus 3. You've got to do 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times 3 is 15x. So you get that 5x times 2x plus 3 is exactly the same as 10x squared plus 15x. Now what we want to do today is we want to do the reverse. So when, they, when you're going to do the reverse, they're going to say to you, factorize 10x squared plus 15x. So they're going to say to you, factorize 10x squared plus 15x. What they want you to do is they want you to come to 10x squared plus 15x is equal to something times a bracket. So what you're going to try and do is figure out how to get from here back to there. Now, obviously, it's very easy, this case, because we actually can see it immediately. We can just go right in the answer. But imagine we hadn't started with this. How would we figure out what to put here and what to put there? Well, that stuff we've just been doing about highest common factor is what's going to help us. What we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, let's look and see what is the highest common factor of 10x squared and 15x. All right, highest common factor of 15 and 10, it's 5. Of x and x squared, can I include an x? Yes, but I can only have 1x because this has only got 1x. So I've worked out the highest common factor. That is what can come in front of my brackets, the 5x. Now I've just got to figure out what goes here and here. Well, I have to have that 5x multiplied by this thing must get me back to 10x squared. So 5x times what gives me 10x squared? That's what I'm asking myself. Well, 5 times 2 gives me 10, and x times x gives me x squared, right? Now, the next thing, I've got to figure out what goes here. So it's 5x times what gets me back to plus 15x. Well, the first thing I know is that this has to be a plus because 5x is positive, so it's going to be positive times positive to get me the positive. 5 times 3, right, will get me to the 15. And x times what to get me to x? Well, it's just times 1. So I don't need to put anything more there. And so I've got my answer. I've factorized. 10x squared plus 15x is exactly the same as 5x into 2x plus 3. And can you see, factorizing starts with this and ends up with something multiplied by something. In other words, factors. Multiplying out, you start with the factors. Something multiplied by something. And you multiply it out to get to this answer, 10x squared plus 15x. So two totally different, two questions that are the reverse of each other. Multiplying out, you start here and end there. Factorizing, you start the other way around and you end up with it in factored forms. And you use this highest common factor idea. Okay, why don't you try factorizing 6m squared minus 3m cubed? Pause the video, try it now, and we'll go over it together. Okay, so you have 6m squared and you have 3m cubed, and you want to find the highest common factor. So the highest common factor of 3 and 6, that's going to be 3. Can include m, but we only want m squared, right, because we must take the lowest power, otherwise it won't work for this one. So then we know that what we have here is that this is going to be 3m squared multiplied by something. 3m squared multiplied by this must get me back to 6m squared. So this obviously has to be 2 because 3 times 2 gives me 6 and m squared times 1 just gets me to m squared. Pay attention to the sign. This thing here is negative so I must have a negative. And then the question here is, 3m squared times what will get me to 3m cubed? Well, it's just going to be 3 times th 1 and m squared times m to get to m cubed. So it's minus 1m. Let's just write that nicely now. 3m squared, right? 
2, and I don't have to include that 1 because 1m is just m. So it's 3m squared 2 minus m. And remember, you can always, always check your factorization by multiplying out. 3m squared times 2 is 6m squared. 3m squared times m gives me, times minus m gives me minus 3m cubed. Okay, what about this next one? This next one's funny because if we try and find your highest common factor, 4 and b, right? Uh, what goes? What number? Whole number goes into four and three with no remainder. There's, the biggest one is one. Um, can I include an a? No, because there's no a here. Can I include a b? No, because there's no b here. So in fact, this one, the the highest common factor is just one, and there's no point in taking out one because then I'll just have one times three a plus b. So this thing can't be factorized. It just stays as is. Three a plus b. All right. Why don't you try c? Pause the video um, and let's um, do it and then we'll, we'll go over it. Right, I've written down my um, three like that now. Um, and what is the highest common factor of all of those? Well, that's obviously three. Here I can include a p, but it must only be p squared. And I can't include a q because this thing doesn't have a q. So I'm going to have three p squared. And then what's left from this? It's going to be four and then p squared q cubed. What's left from here? It's a plus and then a 6p and q and then a negative and then 3p squared into 3p squared goes once. So there's your factorization. This last little one is a funny one, right? If we just have a look, we could do as we normally have, 2x and 4x squared, and our highest common factor, you should be good at this by now, is 2x, and we pull it out, and we say 2x, what's left here? 2x times this must give me minus 2x, so it must be multiplied by minus 1. And 2x times that must get me back to minus 4x squared, so it's going to be minus, and then 2 into 4 goes twice, and we have an x. So this is a perfectly good factorization, but most people do not like all these negatives inside a bracket. And so often when you have a negative here and a negative here, both of these things are negative, people prefer to take out, instead of taking out your highest common factor of just plain 2x, they choose to take out a negative 2x. And then you'll see it actually works out neater because this times this must get you back to minus 2x. Well, minus 2x times what? Well, it's going to be minus 2x times 1 gets me to minus 2x. And then this times this must get me back to minus 4x squared. Well, what must the sign be? Well, a negative times a positive will get me back to this negative. And then 2 times 2 will get me back to 4 and I've got to have an x here. And so you will see, it's a bit nicer. Minus 2x into 1 plus 2x. This bracket just looks a bit prettier. But both of these things are perfectly decent factorizations of this thing here. If we multiply either of these two things out, we will get back to where we started.